Hi everyone and welcome to Curly and Yarny. My name is Milena and in today's video I will be talking about hem stitching. So let's get started. So this video has been requested by uh, one of my subscribers, so <laughs> thank you for, su for suggesting it. I'm always happy to uh, read you and know uh, what you would like to see in uh, my videos. Uh, so somebody wanted to see how I uh, hemstitch my woven piece, uh, so I'm going to tell you uh, in deep how I do this. Uh, but before jumping into that, I just wanted to tell you a bit more about hemstitching in general and maybe tell you more about why would someone want to hemstitch a piece instead of other options. So. Let's start this. So uh, when we weave, uh, when when the project is under tension, uh, the threads, the weft threads are uh, interlacing between the uh, the warp threads, and uh, while it is on the loom, everything usually stays pretty much in place. However, once the project is finished and once take the project off the loom, uh, the weft threads, the first few ones, they. Uh, if we don't do anything, they are not secured and they could uh, unweave. So, so to me, there's two big ways to finish off a piece, so the, maybe the, most, the two most common ways. So the first one would be to me making knots and the second one would be to hem stitch. So uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of both, both methods. Uh, so making knots for me, it's just the simplest way. Uh, so I make knots once uh, the project is completely off the loom and then I just take little bundles of uh, warp threads and I make knots and this way the web threads are safe. Secured. Uh, it goes usually pretty fast, especially if we make big nuts. Um, however, uh, sometimes uh, big nuts are not necessarily uh, as aesthetics as we would want it to be. <laughs> so sometimes when we want to uh, have a little finish on the piece, maybe nuts. Sometimes it might just fit very well with the project, but sometimes you might think, oh, that's a bit bulky. Is that exactly the visual effect I was looking for? Uh, also, the nuts they need to uh, we need to wait until the project is off the loom to make them, and sometimes it doesn't take much once the project is off the loom for the web threads to unweave. Uh, so this is why uh, I try to avoid avoid nuts often <laughs> because I notice that uh, I shake a little just by shaking a little bit the piece the threads start to unweave. So that's something that uh, so we don't really want to do. <laughs> so uh, we put so many hours into weaving the piece we don't want it to unweave uh, so rapidly. So now let me talk to you about hem stitching. So um, hem stitching is uh, done uh, simply with some weft thread, so the same uh, thread that we uh, uh, use to weave that piece, and with a needle. So not much equipment needed. Usually I would take a, a, a like a yarn needle, so quite big. And hem stitching would uh, would usually uh, give a very uh, I, I like it, so a very pretty uh, finish. So it doesn't make bulky edges uh, as with the nuts, it is kind of a thin finish. And I find that it looks very clean too. Um, however, hem stitching could take a bit more time, but I find that once you get the hang of it, it goes usually by uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but it, it requires a bit more dexterity, and it requires, it, to me, a bit more patience, because I would start weaving a little bit, and once I have a few inches in, maybe two, three inches, this is when I start doing the hem stitch. But I need to... <laughs> um, talk to myself because I just want to keep weaving so bad but I need to pause my weaving, do the hem stitch and then I can weave again. So this is where sometimes it's not a big tricky part but it is a bit more tricky. And one of the one of the best advantages I believe in the hem stitch is that I always do it while my project is still on the loom. Uh, so there is no risk at all of unweaving or unraveling with it uh, because I do it uh, while it's on the loom uh, in comparison with a nut that I need to wait for it to be off the loom. Um, I believe there are some people who do the hem stitch once the project is off the loom, uh, but I have never tried it, and I think it goes easier once the project when the project is under tension. It's just easier to take the threads and do the hem stitch there. Without further ado, let's just get started. <laughs> so I will show you uh, how I do this. Okay, so there's been a change of plans. Uh, so uh, I originally recorded the hem stitching on my weaving series, so on my far shaft loom, but the quality of the image was very bad, so I think the warp was just too shiny. <laughs> so uh, with the light, it was just very hard to see what I was doing. I have just re-recorded it with a new project now on my original loom. So now let's start this for real. 
I have the warp on, I have uh, woven a few, uh, a few inches of scrap yarn in order to even out my threads. So I'm going to uh, weave the uh, few first picks of the project. And hem stitching actually starts right there. <laughs> so uh, we need to uh, plan a bit ahead when we do the first few picks. So for the first pick, so I like to start in the up position. So I do the first pick, I put my shuttle in, but I'm not going to weave just yet because I need to keep a bit of tail and this tail will be used to do the hem stitch. So I usually keep about three times the width of the project and a little bit more just for luck. <laughs> so one, two and three and a bit more so I have just enough. So now I can beat and I can keep on weaving. And as I weave the first few uh, picks, I'm just gonna leave this tail hanging right there and I'm gonna use it later on. Okay, so and now I have woven about one inch, a bit more than one inch. Uh, so we really don't need to be weaving that much in order to start the hem stitching, but we do need a few uh, picks and I will explain why. So uh, during the hem stitching, uh, I am going to make bundles of uh, warp threads and weft threads combined. Uh, this is why we need to have a few picks woven in order to be able to uh, pick up some uh, weft threads in the hem stitching. Uh, also, um, for uh, the bundles that we make, there's really no rule. Uh, it's uh, pretty much how you feel. Uh, just know that if you make the, your bundles bigger, then it would take less time, but it will be a bit bulkier. And if you make your bundles smaller, it will take more time to uh, go across uh, the warp, but at the same time, it will be uh, probably uh, thinner. So it's really up to uh, the piece itself, so uh, how you want it to look, and sometimes also uh, how patient you are. <laughs> um, first, I'm going to use a needle. So I use, I think it's like a, knit, a knitting needle. So it just needs to be big enough uh, in the eye of the needle to be able to uh, hold uh, the yarn. And um, so here we have the tail that uh, we uh, left when we wove the first pick. So I'm going to uh, thread my needle first. Just like that. And I'm going to zoom in into uh, the first warp threads. So if we take a look at the thread here, it is not secured, especially if we compare to uh, the other, uh, on the other picks. So uh, all the other uh, picks here, I went around this last warp thread to when I was weaving, but since this one is the first and I still got the tail, it is not protected in the way that I haven't went around it. So this is what I want to do now. I just want to fix it to make sure that nothing's happened. So I'm simply going to go around it like that. Oh. Just like that. So now it is like any other edges. So let me just uh, pause the video here for uh, two seconds. So uh, I believe there are different ways to deal with uh, this first warp thread. So this is what I like to do, uh, but I know that some people might just leave it like that and I think it would still be fine. Uh, I know that some other people might just be tempted to do a little knot, which could also be fine. So at the end, it's all about what works for you and this is what works for me. So now back to the video. For a uh, DM stitch, uh, I'm going to make bundles of three warp threads and two weft threads. So, the first thing I'm going to do is go, uh, um, it's with my needle, I'm going to go underneath three warp threads and two weft threads. So this, those will be the three warp threads, but I also need to pick underneath two weft threads. So I need to count one, two, three, and one, two. So I'm going to go right here. So I'm gonna zoom in again, to make sure that you see. Oh, this is the max. <laughs> so we really see that underneath here, I have one, two, three warp threads and one, two weft threads. So then I pull the needle. Then the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go again from under, underneath the three warp threads only. Just like that. 
and as I do this you already start to see a loop forming and I pull and now we have one hem stitch so I'm going to do it again with more indications so it's a bit tightly <laughs> woven my piece <laughs> and so I just came out from here in between those two work threads so I'm going to go again into this hole I've created and dig into my woven cloth so I still want to go underneath three work threads and two weft threads so the first thing that I do with my needle is probably the hardest one because I need to count twice I need to count the work threads and the weft threads so now I can always check one two three one oh I have three work thread weft threads one two okay <laughs> and so now I pull and now we can do this second one so again I'm going to dig inside the hole I have created with the other um, stitch and now I'm going to go only underneath the three warp threads like that So let's do it one more time so I just went out from this hole here so now I'm gonna dug in again I'm going to go underneath three work threads and two weft threads and whew. now I am through so I pull and now underneath only the four work threads And I pull. So I will keep doing a few ones, but this time I want you to. Um, I'm going to uh, draw your attention to the position of my yarn, because there's a little trick. It's not really a trick, but there's something we need to consider in order to be able to make the hem stitch correctly. So here I'm going to do the first step as normal. So three warp threads and two warp threads, and I'm going through here. And I pull and after that I pull I try to put my yarn like this and now I go underneath the warp threads and as I pull we will see we are going there's a loop and we're going into the loop now I'm going to show you another way to do it so I'm going to go underneath three warp threads and two warp threads I pull but if instead of putting the yarn, if instead of putting the yarn here on the scrap yarns, if I just left it here, then if I go underneath, when I go underneath the three warp threads, when I pull, I don't, you see that I'm not going inside the loop. So if I keep on pulling, then the hem stitch is not completed because I haven't made a loop. So this. A uh, thread is not going all around the threads, it's just going maybe halfway around the thread, so it's only going underneath. So, what we want to do when this happens, it's okay. Some people, when they do the hem stitch, uh, but naturally they just always pull uh, the yarn this way, so you simply have to manually go inside it. So, I'm going to, to show it again to you in order to, for it to be clear. So, I'm going and do the first so the, for the first step is exactly the same thing I always grab three I want to grab three weft threads today <laughs> so I pick and I can either lean it here or I can, I can lean it here so both way works the only thing is that if I lean it here I will automatically be when I come back with the needle I automatically come inside of the loop so it already makes the uh, hem stitch as opposed that if I go if I leave the yarn this way then I need to simply go back into the loop with my needle to make sure that I go inside the loop
So now we've just reached uh, the last uh, hem stitch. Um, for this last one, uh, I'm lucky today. I didn't, I didn't really count, but it turns out that I have exactly three warp threads left, so all my bundles would be the same. Uh, but sometimes uh, when we weave, it doesn't always magically happen this way. <laughs> so uh, sometimes we, uh, I might, I could have end up with only two warp threads left, left or four warp threads. Uh, so then I just simply make one bundle smaller or one bigger. For me, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't show so much at the end. So now for this last one, when I'm going to do the first step, when I want to go a day into the woven cloth, if I try to go out after the two, right, after the two first picks, well, <laughs> I'm in the air. So what I'm going to do, uh, depending on the project, sometimes I simply try to go and um, grab into the uh, warp, the last warp threads. So. I go through, sometimes I just don't mind, I just go in the air or uh, it really depends of the project but here it was easy to go through so just like that and now I am going to, uh, to the one underneath only the warp threads and I pull and it looks like the other ones. <laughs> So now for uh, the remaining tail, so I still have a lot of tail, uh, depending on the pattern, depending on many things, I do different things with it. Uh, if it's the same color as uh, the threads here, sometimes I like to just let it hang and it becomes part of the fringe. Um, it stood out a little, but it's not too bad. Sometimes if I really wanted to hide it, I will simply uh, weave it in. Uh, so uh, now that the hem stitch is done, I'm uh, simply going to keep weaving and I'll be back with you uh, when I reach the end of this small scarf. Alright, so uh, now the weaving is done. So uh, the first thing I need to do before cutting the yarn from uh, my shuttle is to uh, again leave a tail of yarn. So I want it to be three times the width of my project so we have one two and three so i'm going to cut it one two and three and a little bit for luck and i'm going to take my needle back so uh, doing the hem stitching on this uh, at the end of the project is not so different than doing it at the beginning the only thing is that we kind of have to work uh, on the opposite because it's kind of a mirroring because <laughs> when we start when we are uh, here uh, the, pro the hand woven project is on top of the hem stitch uh, but when we are here uh, the hand woven project is at the bottom of the hem stitch uh, but the technique is the same so uh, same thing here, as you can see the last thread here is kind of loose so I will I want to uh, fix it. So I go around just like that and now I can start doing the hem stitch. So I will do the same thing that I did at the beginning. So I want to uh, do bundles of three warp threads and two weft threads. So here again, the first step will be to um, use the needle to uh, pierce underneath in the hand woven piece underneath three warp threads and two weft threads. So kind of in a diagonal. So that would mean pretty much here. So we have one, two, three warp threads and that's one and that's the second weft threads. So I pull the yarn. Then I'm going to go around the same warp thread but only around the warp threads and I pull and I just make sure to go inside of the loop. So I will do that uh, one more time. A few more times actually. <laughs> so as you can see I ended up, my needle ended up this way and it made kind of a, a gap in between uh, the hem stitch and the yarn that are not hem yet. So I go from there and again I go underneath my woven piece and I pierce uh, into uh, the woven piece. So underneath three warp threads and two weft threads. So like that I pull on the yarn and now I go underneath three warp threads and I pull. And we can see very well, better than when we were at the bottom, the loop forming. Because when we were doing it at the bottom of the project, we had the uh, scrap yarn. <laughs> I was kind of in the way of showing this, but uh, when we do it at the, at the top, it's fun for that. We can see it more clearly. 
so I'm going to pierce again here so three warp threads, two weft threads in a diagonal from underneath and then I pull and now I go around the warp threads and we see the nice loop forming so really this makes it go all around the threads and we see that the threads are all very well grabbed by the loop so I want to show you again the thing I was showing you earlier about the position of the yarn. So after the first step, it's important to uh, take into consideration where you put the yarn uh, because this will uh, impact a little bit uh, how you're gonna uh, pull the yarn after that from the second step. So here again, the first step is the same. So I go underneath three warp threads and two weft thread and I pull. So the way to do it with the simplest way to do it, we're just making sure to put the yarn on the threads that are not woven. A little bit like we were doing at the beginning when we we're putting it on the scrap yarn. It was the easiest way because then when I go and under the other threads, I do the step two and I pull on the needle, then we are exactly inside of the loop and it's just done <laughs> magically. But now if I do it the other way, so if I go and do the first take like this and naturally for me I would often just leave the yarn on the woven piece like that I always put the yarn kind of closer to me and uh, but if I do this now for the first step and now I'm at the second step and I pull well you see my I'm not getting out of the loop so the loop is not fully made it only goes a little bit around the threads and here it's not secure so this, not, this would not be a, a proper hem stitch and I don't think this would be as secure as the other way. So I'm just going to go back one step. So now we're still at step two so if I leave my yarn on the woven piece what I need to do is simply pulling and making sure to go through the loop. One way I like to do this I'm going to show you with another one <laughs> is to do this and so I go underneath the three weft threads and I simply grab the yarn with my needle just like that and I pull so I'm going to uh, show you again one more time oh. so this was a project that I wove quite tightly <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes I have a hard time to get the needle out so like this I go up the three warp threads and I just grab on to the yarn. It has the same effect as if I would just try to go through the loop and like that. So really there's one way or the other so it works. It's really just what you're more comfortable with and just keep in mind to always have this kind of loop. It needs to look like that when you pull. And now I am at the last stitch. So if I want this last stitch to uh, really uh, grab onto uh, the uh, weft yarn, I kind of need to um, pierce in it. So sometimes I would have a tendency to just go around it and we'll try to see what it does when I do this. So it would work, we still have a stitch there. Uh, it will still be secured, but it's gonna look different than the other ones because my weft threads here are, have not been grabbed by the uh, stitch. So on the kind of, in a piece like that, it doesn't really show. So that would be a secret between you and me if I were to do it like that. But if you want it to, uh, for your piece to look exactly the same all the way through, there's a different way to go around it. I don't know if I do it the proper way, but what I like to do is simply to pierce into uh, the, the yarn of uh, the, uh, the last word thread when it's possible. Sometimes it's uh, too small and I would just go uh, in between. Uh, I would go either in between the two last threads but when I can I like to go in this one and now we're going to do the little loop the last one and I pull 
So now it does look similar to the other ones and it is very well secured. So and now it's time to cut this off the loop. So this is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. So for uh, the last few seconds of this video, I'm simply going to uh, offer you some footage of uh, the original video. So I'm going to show you more hem stitching. So the hem stitching I made on uh, the other project. So even though the quality wasn't at its best, it's still some other uh, footage of hem stitching. So uh, I hope you'll like it. See you soon. Bye bye.